use cases from, from the field. And so Priya, when you're ready, please come to the stage. Yeah, and yeah. Wonderful, and okay. please feel free to share your slides. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Shall I start? Please start. Yeah, sure. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is Priya, and it's been my first time on the stage, so it's it's fun. Only problem is I can't see my audience. That's not a very good feeling for a speaker. Uh, so I'll start up with my session description. So this might be a little bit different to the other sessions in the in the conference because I come from a networking background, not totally an API engineer. I wish I would. I would someday. But right now I'm working as a strategic cloud engineer for Google Cloud. And my background comes with networking security. And I've started, uh, you know, taking up enterprise banking customers for API platform. And that's where I'm getting to know more about how API management can be helped with the ecosystem around it. So this session today, because I work for Google Cloud, I, I am talking with respect to the product I work with. But again, these are concepts which can be used by any other vendor product wherever you feel like you know these concepts apply. So I this is this is a free form uh, you know presentation. It's not about Google Cloud. It's more about what concepts or what uh, you know techniques can you use to make your banking or finance customer more secure. Of course, if you're in, you, using Google Cloud and if you're using APG, which is the API management system, then these things apply directly. If not, if you're using any other product then yeah, please feel free to take these as learnings and then maybe you can do similar ones with the other customers, uh, your customers as well. Um, so for my uh, my background comes, like I said, heavily with networking, but over the past few years, I've seen that, you know, uh, most of the time when I encounter some, some kind of uh, API management related solution and then banking customers especially are very keen on multiple layers of security for a very good reason. We all know finance and banking, very keen on compliance, very keen on security. So with this presentation, I'm, uh, I'm planning to take you through some of those topics which I have seen in my experience working at enterprise customers and what has benefited me as an architect that what design or what kind of, uh, you know, uh, what te what techniques do I use for making it as per the design which customer requires. So uh, basically 20 minutes of my years of just experience working with the banking customers. So I will take through the next one. Like I said, I'm going to talk beyond APIs. Of course, API management is the core part of it. But again, what is the ecosystem which can make it much more secure, much more performance, uh, you know, sca scalable, reliable, and everything? So, with respect to API management, there are a couple of, you know, I can frame out six key components which do apply as part of the stronger ecosystem. One is the network. How is it that you are able to access your API management, uh, you know, server itself? For example, APG in this case. So I, I deploy APG in a small, you know, in on a server or somewhere. What is it that makes it much more robust, much more secure? So that comes with networking. I'll highlight some points and then we'll go through a sample architecture of how we design it in a typical, you know, enterprise customer scenario. Then it would be um, security. Like I said, multiple layers of security is what is needed to, nowadays, and especially with something like a web-facing uh, component, if, if it's a website or it's a you know some kind of banking uh, structure, then that needs much more levels of security to make sure nothing no, nothing gets in, intruded without intention. So that's one aspect of it. Performance again, nobody likes a slow browser response. So what exactly we can do to make it much more, you know, late, low latency, improved performance and reliability. Nobody needs 404 error saying this is out of service. So what makes it more reliable? And then the new, you know, two new concepts saying, how can this be multi-cloud? And then what can AI do in, you know, automatically detecting something, blocking some, uh, you know, un uh, unintentional uh, intruders or something. So we'll cover these six aspects to some extent, we'll dive deep into some of them because networking and security is my primary area. But I'll give you a quick glance of what are the other areas as well. And we'll have five minutes at the end for questions you might want to ask. 
So coming to the first one, first and foremost, security. Now, with respect to security, there are multiple components which can be used. And again, like I said, these are just examples of what I use in my day-to-day -day uh, day -day work. But again, you will you'll find similar ones elsewhere as well. So in our case, when we go to a customer scenario and they want an API management system in place, we first look at how can we secure it from the internet facing traffic. Internal traffic is still a lower risk compared to an internet traffic, which is anybody can access it. So for those things, wherever there is a public IP address or a public endpoint, which, you know, which is actually a boundary between you, your control network and the network, which is out of your control, this is where we want to put as much, uh, you know, as much, um, as much security as possible. So Cloud Armor is one of those uh, really good web firewall applications, which we always recommend that going with the Cloud Armor helps protect these kind of attacks. So that will be at your layer one of security, the front end of the security. Then with Cloud Identity and Access Management, this is another one which we use for authenticating and authorizing user access. Now, as a user, I might have access as a user to one project and I might be admin to another one, but I want users to have their roles, their separate roles, and want to make sure that whoever is accessing my API platform has that right to access it and what rights does it have? Is, it, is he an admin or is he just a normal user? What kind of access should I give you? So that, that kind of, uh, those kind of things are very important when you want to consider this. And then the third thing which we use more often is who is able to access your data. So there might be users who have access to a particular network, but they shouldn't be allowed to operate, you know, try even if it is an internal employee, even if it is internal to the bank, they shouldn't be allowed to access data from another team's folder. So this kind of restrictions can be imposed by something called a VPC service control. That's again, a recommended layer of another layer of security. So it forms a perimeter around your uh, critical data or critical solutions, because even though, you know, I might have 1000 employees in the bank or 10,000, not all the employees should have access to everything, say HR payrolls, or what if somebody just has access to that. So these are the things which we consider, I gave a simple example, but they can be deeper examples. We do consider having an extra layer of perimeter around it. You can call it like ring fencing that critical uh, components, those components. Uh, then recapture again, uh, recapture is something which we recommend because it's a many, many times it has been seen that automated scripts or bots are used for attacking a particular server. So recapture is a good, a really good way of restricting those, you know, blocking those uh, uh, calls from automated bot and that this is based on a continuous machine learning algorithm. The algorithm tracks what has happened in the past and then learns it on the fly that this looks this looks suspicious. Let's block it here. Um, again, number fifth is cloud DP, DLP, data loss prevention. Now, this is very critical for certain banks, especially because not everything should be, uh, there, there can be sensitive data in the payload or there can be sensitive data in the request itself. So this is again an extra layer of masking that data before it goes out of your network. So whenever there's somebody triggering an API call or getting a response, of course, there will be other even like API management itself will provide a lot of these capabilities. But this is an additional layer which we recommend as network specialists. And then the final one would be customer managed encryption keys. Encryption keys, again, what keys do you want to use to encrypt your data? This is again something which customers want to have control and that's why we pro we ask them to have your own managed keys and then it will be rotated often. Now, these are certain, as I said, of, of course, API management uh, solutions like APG, they will provide a lot of it in the product itself. But these are as a network security person, you want to have that as much as as much cushion as possible, apart from what is there really there. So I'll go to the next one then. Mm, this is something again, AI powered automation, so anomaly detection. This is very secure, very important for security perspective. And manually, yes, we can see as much as possible. We will try to inspect to the best of our capabilities, but AI and machine learning are really growing ahead in that area. So we want customers to use this historical API metadata based on that. It will detect anomaly detection. It will also predict what kind of peak traffic can you expect? When can you expect that? Because it has we do track a lot of previous data, historic data, and we'll be able to give a good prediction of what can happen, what kind of peak seasons you might find. 
and then compliance requirements because again tracking the historic data gives us more uh, you know information on which apis are adhering to the compliance requirements so these are important from a security perspective uh, then comes reliability and performance like i said nobody wants to see a website which is down or which is very slow it's frustrating for everyone so with at google we do have uh, we do take advantage of cloud cdn which is which is where we we leverage all the 24 regions where the uh, application can be hosted, API management can be hosted, and it can be in more than 1,000 locations for caching. So that is really improving your latency. And store data in the region of choice. Now, this is something which many financial organizations have compliance for. So if the data, say, for example, if it's geography-related, this country, we shouldn't uh, store the data in another part of the world when it is coming from originating from this country. So there are many regulations from countries, continents. So that varies. So we do recommend that, you know, while designing your architecture, make sure that you choose the location where you have compliance agrees to store it. And then rest of it, it can be managed because it's already in 24 regions and 100 locations. So that's another thing to notice. And finally, hybrid architecture. So many a times it happens that if there is a API management uh, you know, server running, up, running in the cloud, then there is some bit of latency. Even if you have a very, you know, very high performing network interconnects, there might be some latency, which for some applications, it might add to that total you know, time to travel from the packet from your backend to the server to the customer. So that's the reason we do recommend another product in case if it is heavy on latency requirements, it's really strict on that, then you can deploy your actual API, you know, uh, the proxy, like in APG, we have the data plane, which actually interprets the traffic that can reside in the local network. Again, this has security implications as well, because you don't want that data to go to a cloud provider's network. So in those cases, we ask, we do recommend deploying it on the local network, wherever the company's on-premises. And it can, uh, for, for instance, in case of APG, we, do, uh, we, we can also support AWS and Azure Microsoft data planes running in those. So that's hybrid architecture because everybody wants flexibility. Now I will um, I will quickly go through one sample architecture, and I think this is where I would like to pin. This is some uh, a customer where I worked, and it's an enterprise customer, a banking customer, and this is what we did for them. And this is typically the way we recommend the customers to develop architectures. So if in case you know you end up having a situation, at least you'll have uh, some reference points of. Google Cloud, how we do it, and maybe other clouds or other vendors if you have similar situation. So um, for this one, architecture overview. Now, when I refer to APG X, um, that is the product which is owned by Google. So we are taking this example of using APG X as an API management platform in this case. So if you see this uh, pink box here, this is the actual runtime, say the binaries, actual binaries which are running. So of course your customers might be out in, on the internet and when they call the APIs, the API has to traverse and enter this, it will be processed, all your proxy, whatever policies you have will be processed, then it goes to the backend. So in this case, uh, what I want to highlight is that there is, there is a, you know, with APG X, it does not have a public facing IP address. Now that is, that is a big win for security teams because any software which has a public IP will be vulnerable to attacks because people, uh, you know, hackers, intruders can find out that IP and try to target that IP. So in case of APGX, what we, what we did, Google did is that let's keep it as a second layer and the first layer comes the other customer network. So customer network can have all the things which I mentioned in my previous slides all those cloud armor policy, all these firewall rules, everything. And then only when it is safe, it enters APG runtime. So APG X runtime is kept as a second layer, but first it has to go through the customer project. And this is where networking teams focus a lot. So if you see the green box, this is the public facing box. This will have an external IP address. And we as a networking you know, security specialist 
we make sure that this design is robust and no no nothing can go across this uh, without intention and only when you know it's a, a really good um, good packet good api request then we pass it on to the apg runtime now by default there is an isolation between these two networks in case of apg and we recommend having isolation between your actual api management servers and the ones which are facing the internet but to configure this can be configured while deploying apgx itself it can be configured so that only this the the network from here is the only gate you know channel for anybody to communicate to this network so these are two separate networks this red line is to show you that these are isolated networks which can be configured to have a communication channel and um, uh, other than that apgx like most i think most other saas products is fully managed and it runs in google's own vpc so it has all the you know scalability performance which google does for its own servers like youtube server or all so google hosts it google runs it and the one which is responsibility for a network engineer is the gray box now going to the next one this is the beginning and now you see an end to end example of how an api request goes i think i'll take you through the whole example at the end as well so first looking at this like i said there was a red line in between these two boxes gray and the pink one now this red line can be configured like network peering is a way in which we recommend and it's it's part of the product when you deploy apgx you have to configure a peered network peered network means they both can talk to each other because that's a trusted network this is not internet this is trusted network the green box is the internet now say for example we have a region say london belgium anything so in that region when you deploy the run times this is where your actual processing is happening api proxy payload processing everything and on the right you see your backend and now again your backend can be any other internet facing uh, you know network or it can be your banks or customers on premise network where they have a dedicated interconnect or they have a vpn or it can be wild internet as well so as far as uh, we are concerned we are bothered about the this part of it which is the gray box and the other part network peering make sure that the private ip address which is given to apgx can only be communicated from within this project it can't be reached from outside so after, so going to the next one yeah going to the next one now in between like i said we do add certain more components in the in the network customer network project and one of them a uh, critical one i would say is a load balancer now we don't want any backend instance for for this load balancer apg x is a backend we don't want to overload it so for instance if you have two regions this might be region 1 where you are hosting say in london and maybe a belgium is another region where you are hosting another similar apg run time then this global load balancer it's called a google cloud global load balancer this makes sure that if a user is logging say for example we have one region in europe and one in america if a user is logging in from america then this component will make sure that the the api request is forwarded to the america region apgx if it is from europe it's to the europe region so this makes sure that it is load balanced and it is closest to the location where the query is coming from that that improves a lot of latency requirements and again this you need not worry about this failing because it's google cloud's uh, front end device so this this will be taken care by google to manage it and along with this you can add rules we do recommend adding rules like cloud armor there is at the entry point itself because this has an external ip anything with external public ip is a big uh, red mark for the security teams to approve so here here is where we say you have all the policies you have armor and as a second layer of um, that's the first one as a second layer we also recommend you know this is good to have because again we are communicating from the load balancer to the backend so it's nice to have and you can configure some other software here as well which is like nginx if you want another layer of security or another layer of check so this is how we usually recommend a customer to get into the uh, apg project and coming to the internal workloads it's because external workloads are checked you know you have very high security internal workloads can directly talk because this is coming from your trusted network it's not coming from outside 
So we do recommend that, you know, talk to that. And then again, same way, if it is back, going back, if your backend is residing in the cloud, then yes, it can go back directly. No need to go through those hops. But if it is going out to the internet, then we again propose to have something like a cloud net where it can talk to the external payloads. So now coming to the whole API uh, call lifecycle, like I said, so when your customers, let's imagine it's like a banking, say online banking application. So anybody can use a mobile phone and trigger a call or do something. So what we do is your customers, whenever, wherever they are, we treat them as, you know, uh, internet facing applications. And we make sure that it is going through the external load balancer first where you will have cloud armor policies, you will have security at that layer itself. Although it's a public IP, we still make sure that it has reliability, security, and it does good performance because it diverts the traffic to whichever region the user is coming from. And then the call, uh, you know, then the, this packet goes to uh, another bridge VM, which is a virtual machine. It's another machine, but it's running in the cloud. But this can again be, uh, you might have another Nginx server or something else here. So after going through these two, it finally gets the packet goes to the runtime. This is where API policies are triggered, API, you know, the spike arrest or whatever we want to trigger. APG processes the payload. It checks for what is needed and then it transfers it to the backend. And like I said, backend can again be internet or it can be on-premise network. Most of the time we find that, you know, banks do host it either in on-premise or it can also be in another cloud that that's also possible. Most likely Google cloud, if it is there, it's try it's easier going there, but it can also be hosted in your backends can be in any other cloud anywhere else. Now this was a call life cycle for, a, for a cloud scenario. But when we come to um, when we come to on premise, I haven't made slides for that, but you can find the documentation. Similar rules apply when something is entering better have all these kind of checks, firewall rules, all these, and then it enters the actual runtime, then it goes back. But your in case of hybrid, you might have your processing this runtime on premise on your in your network or on Azure or on AWS somewhere else. I think with that, I'm left with five minutes, so I'll stop for questions. I can't hear you, sorry, uh, Shirin. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear now, yeah. Wonderful, thank you so much, Priya, for your time um, for this presentation. I think we have time for probably one or two questions. And so the first one I'm going to ask is, in your experience, what are the main areas of focus for finance and banking customers with respect to security? Yeah, I, I think like I said, security is the key for, especially in finance domain, in banking domain. So most of the time the, the customers have concerns, is it public facing website or how do we protect it? So it's always going through those multiple hops of security. It's just one, one component of security. We don't rely on that. We want to have as many layers as possible. And that's why right from the beginning of your edge of the network till the packet actually traverses to your back end, it has to go through a number of different security features. So the one I explained in the networking and security slide, we do recommend at least five or six of them I've mentioned, but there are many more. So we recommend these as best practices and uh, yeah, like finance customers are very keen on that. So Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all the insight that you provided today. We appreciate you once again and we look forward to continuing to learn from you. Thank you so much. Cheers.